So today we're going to show you how to install the lower control arms on the front of the BRZ. Uh, we actually had to do this because we upgraded to the AP brakes and the existing stock control arm was actually hitting the back of the rotor. Uh, I only saw that people with aftermarket ball joints had this issue, but I guess it can happen with stock ones too. And uh, I want the extra camber adjustment anyway, so we just decided to install these uh, SPL control arms, which are pretty nice. All right, so here we just have the existing control arm. Um, just showing you the two. It's one, one nut, one bolt. I think they're both 21 millimeter. The one on the left is going to get replaced by a stud. Then these two are 17. That's where it mounts to the subframe. And the last one is where the ball joint is and that one I believe is a 19 but I could be wrong so after you loosen all those I had to pry a little bit to pop the control arm off this stud some might come off easier That's the stud, I believe it was a 16 millimeter, maybe a 15, um, to loosen that up. You're gonna replace that with a bolt. And here's the assembly of the control arm. So that's the stud, or the bolt that replaces the stud you removed. You use a big washer and a small one on top, and then one small one on the bottom and that's for both sides on a car that's got stock suspension uh, so stock ride height that's the caster arm um, so you can turn that and that will push out giving you more caster or pull in giving you less. That is the bolt that goes through the ball joint. Uh, it has a nylon nut on the bottom and then a nut on the top. So it's actually a stud. And the way you tighten that is by tightening the top nut first with having uh, a couple jam nuts on the bottom. You just tighten them together use that to hold it and that will allow you to tighten the top nut. There's also that spacer that goes in between your hub and your spherical joint right there. And that side is where it mounts to the subframe. You want the large spacer in the back there's two allens underneath. You loosen those to be able to adjust your camber with that big nut. Make sure you put that big spacer towards the back of the vehicle when you install it. And then it just has a center bolt through the middle of the control arm to hold the caster arm on. So here I've got it installed in the subframe first. Um, I think this is actually the only bolt that and nut you reuse on the control arm. And I'm pretty sure they were 17 millimeter. Next I mounted it to the hub here. And you can see the jam nuts on the bottom. 
So those are that so that I can hold it in place while I tighten the top nut. After that I'll remove the jam nuts and tighten the bottom nylon nut. You should be able to see that spacer is in between the control arm and the hub there. That's to give you some clearance from the hub to the control arm. That's just the nylon nut that goes on after you've tightened the top nut. It gets pretty difficult to turn quick on that since it is a lock washer or a lock nut. I believe they were 81 foot pounds and it's fairly large, I think 24 mil. Here's where you assemble the caster arm with that existing plate and the new bolt that goes through it with your washer assembly. It's got the two washers on top towards the frame, the one washer on the bottom. The top one was that large and small and then the bottom was the smaller washer. I think that bolt was uh, larger than the stock stud nut that was on there. So I don't really remember though what it was, maybe a 22 millimeter. So here's the bolt that goes through the caster arm um, and the control arm. I think it had a pretty high torque, like 110 foot pounds, something around there. Um, and that's always the bolt that you want to loosen if you're going to go and adjust caster. You may want to loosen it for camber as well. I can't remember, but the instructions said uh, definitely loose, loosen it for caster adjustment. Otherwise, you might cause binding. And I mean, basically, you're you don't want any of the joints to have any weird angles. You're trying to make everything kind of as parallel as possible at first. And then, you know, start making your adjustments from there. So we kind of just eyeballed it on both sides and then kept both sides the same and we'll take it and get it properly aligned. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments. Uh, the next time, the tracks open we should be able to go test it out and see what it's like having a little more negative camber in front now and if you enjoyed this just give a like and a subscribe and uh, we'll keep you updated on it thanks